So specifically, this is, this is one of the post-production applications. So uh, this is from Rogue One. This is uh, the director, Gareth Edwards. And one of the things that uh, I noticed very early on, um, even in pre-production when we did a test shoot, is that he has a very different style of shooting from a lot of other directors that I've worked with. Um, he shoots in a more documentary style, where he doesn't come with storyboards um, or even a shot list. Um, and he even does very loose blocking with the actors, and he allows them to kind of find something that feels natural to them. Um, and then being his own camera operator, he likes to, to then go in and fish around and find those angles that feel true and right to him. And he's got a particular talent for finding those angles. But it's sometimes a little vexing for us because we don't know, you know what the visual effects challenges are necessarily going to be until they're actually being shot uh -huh. and what we have to deal with. But uh, kind of watching that process unfold, um, I immediately started thinking about, uh, well, how do we get that energy, that style of, uh, of cinematography and coverage into those scenes that weren't going to start from something that Gareth shot mm -hmm. on set with the camera? What do we do for the space battle? What do we do for shots of ships in transit? How do we get it so that it doesn't feel like a different movie when we get to those mm -hmm. pieces? We want it to have that same energy and vibe. And so one of the thoughts is that we would use this, these motion-captured cameras. So what you saw in the video there is, uh, is Gareth is holding an iPad that's got uh, motion tracking dots on it. And we're using, in that case, that was uh, an HTC Vibe setup that was mm -hmm. tracking the position and, and uh, orientation of the iPad in space. And that was going to a workstation that was generating a view from that, what you'd consider that to be a synthetic camera in the scene. Mm -hmm. So we had a version of the space battle that was all animated in advance that could play back in real time. Um, and then Gareth could fish around and find camera angles and shoot coverage in much the same way he was when he was shooting. So what action. you're saying is that the filmmaker can actually uh, shoot a scene in the same way that they would in the real life, but in a virtual exactly. environment. So it's got the same exact effects that you would expect and, and kind of makes the whole uh, movie, I guess, feel like it's shot in the same way, even though it's exactly. still much of it is it, it enables a workflow that, uh, that is more kind of just in, in his thought process. It works yeah. well for him creatively. And as opposed to, um, you know, it's a very different process that, that you see in a lot of big tentpole films where um, shots will be storyboarded and they'll go through a previs company where um, the compositions are all very deliberately designed and premeditated. And we didn't really want it to have that different stylistic feel. So rather than Gareth kind of doing a brain dump of what he imagines is happening in this shot, in this shot, in this shot, and an artist taking a stab at doing that, looking at it, making comments, and you know, going through that kind of iteration loop, which can take weeks, uh, this is a chance for, for Gareth to, I have an idea for a shot. What about here? Oh, no, that's not. Well, what about down here? Did if he I go it? back and wider? And he, you could see him in, in some of the, yeah. the videos, sort of, you, you could see his thought process as he's trying different things.